Are you wondering what needle felting is? Then this is the video for you because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know and more. Aloha everyone and welcome to today's video, What is Needle Felting? My name is Aislinn and on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting videos, needle felting tutorials, and have product reviews from time to time. So if you're new and this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links in the description below this video or leave me a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. I'm going back to the basics and I'm going to share with you a little beginner series to teach you everything you need to know about needle felting. This is going to be a three-part video series. I feel like I get asked all the time, what is needle felting? Or it's maybe mentioned in one of my videos that I'm going too fast and they can't see what's happening. The very first video that I made answered this question, but I didn't feel like it was super well put together. So so I'm going to start from here. <laughs> In this video, I want to share with you the method, some styles, and even a little bit of history. Felt is the oldest known textile. So felt is the process of creating an object with wool without using water. The fibers are usually wool or animal fur, however people sometimes use synthetic fibers or a blended mix of fibers. There are two main methods of needle felting. The first one that we're here to talk about is needle felting using a needle, and the other one is wet felting where you're using water and soap and compressing the fibers and agitating them with each other to make your solid object. This is a much faster process than needle felting and you can even use bamboo or burlap to help the process go faster. The needle felting is where you're using a barbed needle that comes in different sizes that works a little better depending on what type of fibers you're using. I'll show you this needle a little closer. Here you can see the needle and the barbs on it a little bit closer. And then you're gonna use this barbed needle to pierce the wool over and over to entangle the fibers. So as it goes through the wool, you can see they hook and that causes the entanglement process. You can make all kinds of things from home decor, newborn props like these, or you can even make jewelry or ornaments. You also see needle felting used a lot in clothing or shoe making or hat making. Two main styles of needle felting that I wanted to talk about are kawaii and ASMR. Kawaii in Japanese means cute, so you often see cute little playful type characters made, whereas traditional needle felting is going to be a little more earthy or rustic. And since I have started searching the internet for more needle felting stuff, I have noticed there's some people that pull off some really great realism type needle felting or even artwork where the needle felting looks like a painting. And ASMR means auto sensory meridian response. And you can find needle felting videos that are very relaxing and sedative to watch. I feel like a lot of the first videos that I was making kind of fall in that category more so than tutorial category. My husband Micah makes a lot of the music that you find in my needle felting videos. It's electronic and it has a little bit of a trancey feeling with it. So when you're watching the needle felting object come to life, you also are kind of gaining the process of how I created it along with having a relaxing experience while watching it. Which I have to agree, there's something relaxing, soothing, and satisfying about watching the whole process sped up like that. Alright, now that you know what felt is and the processes of making it, I am excited to share with you guys a little bit of the history. Many cultures have legends about the origins of felting, and the one story that I read about was a Sumerian legend. The Sumerian legend claims the origins of felting where prisoners were fleeing persecution and shoving wool in their sandals to keep from blisters happening. And at the end of the journey, they'd pull the piece of wool out and it would be solid from all the compression and the moisture and the movement, which then turned it into that solid piece of felt. And so the part of history that I thought was really neat and I'm excited to share, a lot of cultures have roots where felting began. And in the 17th century, there was this process called carotene which is the process of making felt hats. If you've been around and following me on social media, you know that I love to knit and crochet hats. I kind of call myself a little bit of a mad hatter. And so if you don't know what the process of carotene is, the process of carotene was when they were taking the rabbit or beaver skins and soaking them in a mercury type solution. They would then stretch the fleece, blow it into a cone shape, and treat it with hot water to get it to consolidate. Then they could just pull it apart. 
and then that solid piece that they would take, they'd put it through rollers to make that felt and call it the hood. Then that was dyed and blocked and made into hats. And then they found that the toxic substances that were from the carotene process was causing mercury poisoning among the hatters. And it's said that that may be the origin of the phrase Mad Hatter from the Lewis and Carroll novel Alice in Wonderland which happens to be one of my favorite movies. So that's it for what I wanted to share with you guys for today's needle felting video. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please be sure and give a thumbs up. And if you haven't considered subscribing yet, please do. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.